guys. Okay, so what we're going to do today is a little bit of the same of what we did uh, on Wednesday. So it's Friday. Uh, it is June the 18th, and we're going to talk about some of uh, Chris Redfield's gear in the game. Uh, later on, I believe either Monday or Wednesday, we're going to talk about some of the Wolfhound gear. Um, but we were specifically going to talk about Chris's stuff in game so let's get into it we're going to go over to figures and take a look at chris's um model here so last time that we did this we talked about chris's ak specifically um i've got a lot of time under my belt around ak's so we went really really in depth into the weeds on this ak i'm not going to be doing that today i'm going to try to keep it short and sweet and then we're going to play through the story a little bit so that I can open up the ability uh, to use this AK in game. All right. So without further ado, we are going to take a look first at Chris's shirt. So obviously um, we're taking a look here, just a standard black turtleneck. Archer would call it a tactile neck. Uh, so that's what we're dealing with there. We're going to go into this sling here. So this sling actually is a... Uh, I believe it's a VTAC uh, sling. Let me show you guys what the heck I'm looking at. We're going to hop over here and pull it onto the screen. This guy right here. So I'll minimize that, bring this up. There we go, now you guys can see what I'm working with. So we'll come over here into, so that's the placard system that he's got going on. Got it. each and every one of these things pulled up here. So let's see. Well, we'll just move into the play, let's do this. We'll move over to Chris's placard here. So we're, we're taking a look, what is a placard, right? A placard is part of his chest rig. Now the difference, we'll, we'll talk there. The difference between a chest rig and a plate carrier is that uh, a chest rig doesn't really have the ability to carry plates. Plate carrier carries plates. Now what does that mean to you? Uh, not a whole lot. Um, there's, I'm not going to go crazy into armor, but basically you can carry armor plates. Um, this is just a chest rig, and what I would suspect that Chris is up to here is that he, in order to keep a lower profile, not that black really keeps a lower profile, um, he's able to keep his rig, his chest rig there, uh, often in, in either a bag or in a car so that he doesn't have a high signature. Then he can pick up his gun and his chest rig, throw everything on, have his comms set and ready to go. Uh, so anyway, so we'll hop back over here to all this stuff that I have pulled up. Now, uh, this is not the exact placard that he has, but this is going to get you real freaking close. So these, uh, this is the 556 placard from uh, Spirit of Systems. There's a bunch of other companies that make these. But basically what this is, is they've got elastic material here and elastic material on the bottom. And then this guy can clip into their chest rig system. And that's exactly what's going on behind me here. Um, this is going to be what mounts to your shoulders and then there's this little back uh retention device if you will uh going on that clips into this placard and we can see that once we switch back over here so you guys see um it all sits on the shoulders there and then they come down and i wish i could get a little bit further but they will clip into the placard there and you'll see the placards a little bit different there's less material on chris's actually and I'm not too specific on what exactly like that exact piece is. Gear is really convoluted. There's so many things and so many options that you can get into. You'll really see this is more of a gloss over uh, overview of gear that I'm going to get into because it's so difficult to get the exact piece right uh, just with the amount of options there. Anyway, so the, obviously we're running uh, Magpul PMAGs in his chest rig. Uh, he's got the spoon attached of these these grenades. Now that that piece there is called the spoon. Uh, they look like marking grenades. They're gonna be blue marking grenades. Uh, generally for it depends on his SOP, but uh, probably to identify friendly forces uh, or you know whatever kind of extraction that he needs. Maybe maybe marking a target for 
uh, ordnance and stuff like that. So then we go up. We talked about the, the ch base chest rig itself. Now, Spirit of Systems actually makes um, radio pouches. So we're talking about the radio pouch here. Uh, they do make radio pouches, but this actually looks a lot more like um, an amalgamation between this uh, company called London Bridge Training, or sorry, London Bridge Tactical, um, makes this. So it looks like that's like 550 cord, and then a company called Eagle Industries. Um, Eagle Industries generally has this clip here, uh, and the one that Chris has on, there's Velcro there. So again, there's so many options in the tactical world um even 511 has one that's got velcro on it so there's it's really difficult to point directly to exactly what he has but this is uh an embitter pouch for his um i think it's a prc radio that he's got on yeah this this prc uh now moving from here so basically what happens is the chest rig is going to go behind what we call molly right this is um i don't remember what the the acronym stands for but it's pretty much the military standard for mounting stuff to your gear right so these weave in and out and they provide for a really super secure mounting system it's a really pain in the ass to mount them but once they're on it's great um so that is what's going on here so his chest rig is actually just running behind those uh and then so that covers that a radio pouch and then we move to this side and the exact same pouch is on this side um with that that velcro enclosure not really the way that i would want to carry uh that particular weapon but whatever dude that's what uh that's what he's got going on and you you can see i mean it makes sense the way that the barrel is and the way how the pouch is slightly collapsed there uh makes total sense so now let's talk about that gun so that gun is a B&T USW. So the B&T USW, and it is actually the B&T USW A1. So the B&T USW A1 was actually designed around, um, so a company called Chris, uh, there's actually Chris USA, makes this, it's called the Sphinx, this base model here. And then B&T basically took it and cut their specific serrations in for their holster, used a branded uh, in-force weapon-mounted light and put that on here. 30-round magazines uh, and a foldable stock with B&T's privately branded optic here that mounts onto the actual frame, the, the actual receiver of the USW. Then they've got uh, the slide here with, actually it has a little jut that comes out like a little, um, like a ridge that sticks out the side of the weapon there. Uh, for your hand to grab onto when you do any kind of malfunctions clearance or manipulations of the slide, things like that. Uh, then we'll see a threaded barrel right here in order to attach a suppressor, which he does run in the game. Um, and something to note here, this is a double action, single action handgun. It's not actually going to be just the same trigger pull every time. You're going to get a long, he heavy trigger pull on the first one, and then it's going to reset and uh, and fire from... Um, single action from that point on. So going into that just real quick. Anyway, so I don't really see it. We, we were having a conversation in the office today about the validity between um, weapons like this, right? And just a regular handgun. And it's very difficult to justify a gun like this versus a handgun. I think it's going to be much quicker to employ a regular handgun Versus what would be called a PDW here, a, uh, like a personal or private defense weapon. Um, a personal defense weapon is generally for like private security details and things like that. But I really can't justify, if you're a strong enough pistol shooter, why you would add a stock to the back of the gun. But I, I just feel like, me personally, it's going to add an extra step that doesn't really need to be there. We'll move on. So we come over here to Chris's setup. And so we talked about the grenades. We can already see uh, the issue with running the grenades on the spoon like that. His stock has pushed his grenade over into this magazine here next to the buttstock. Now, what's going to be the problem when he goes to grab that magazine? That grenade's going to slip right out. 
So something to think about here, guys. You may want to mount your grenades a little bit different. Uh, the other thing, so I'm going to poke a lot of holes into Chris's um, gear real fast. Uh, why in the hell is his are his grenade pins not bent out? So generally we bend, bend the grenade pins up like this instead of just having them straight like you see here. Because if you bump in anything or if it catches on something, you're going to pull it. And then that grenade is going to go off and you're going to have blue smoke right in your face. So, like, not really the greatest uh, way to run about this. And it could be a flashbang. It could be, you know, there's no really uh, identifiable thing here. It says grenade hand diversionary. So it could be a flashbang. Uh, but generally they would tell you flashbang uh the fact that it's marked in blue tells me that it's probably a smoke grenade um but not everything in resident evil is the exact same as it is, is in real life this is where i also poke holes in chris's thing chris i'm talking to him directly yes this video game character why in the hell is his tourniquet still in the plastic so any of you who have had any sort of medical training uh whether it be military law enforcement uh even my emts no, if you're going to have a tourniquet, especially if it's going to be in a pouch, have that bitch out of the plastic wrap. So then you also see underneath here, which I, I applaud Resident Evil for the uh, detail. You can see the paper instructions on the inside of this thing. So if he has to deploy this tourniquet and to turn off the faucet, so to speak, if he's shot in the arm or a friend or whatever the fuck, if he's, he's shot in the leg... He's going to have to rip through this plastic and that rip away that instruction manual in order to deploy this fucking thing. Like, come on. Ugh. It's it's one of those things is it seems like a really tiny detail, but it just takes away. It detracts from the realism that we would expect Chris to have that much experience or just like Ian or I mean, Ethan being like, oh, well, I had military training and then making all these terrible decisions in the game. Uh, yeah. So anyway, we'll talk about this specific pouch. So this specific pouch is made by a company called High Speed Gear International. Actually, there's that sling that I was talking about, the VTech one. Um, I'm not as organized today, unfortunately. So HSGI makes that. Let's hop into... You know what? I'll just do this. High Speed Gear TQ pouch. Right? So... High Speed Gear International makes that. And how did I know it was High Speed Gear International? Well, so if you take a look here, High Speed Gear uh, uses a lot of elastic on their stuff. They, they use a lot of retaining um, elastic bungee, which is cool. Uh, and it can allow for a lot of different pieces of gear uh, in their equipment. So if your tourniquet pouch, for whatever reason, needs to get used for something else, um, you can. And a lot of their the equipment that HSGI makes is very... Uh, adaptable between the between all different types of gear that you can use so anyway that is going to be the hsgi uh tourniquet pouch there like we said we went over the spirit of systems one um there's other companies that make placards similar to this you know ferro concepts makes one um i believe i had them pulled up at some point but anyway yeah so that goes over the majority of those now let's move up here so we talked about the vtac sling we're going to come and talk about his headset here. Now, what's... Hey, what's going on? Um, so, Chris's headset here. What in the hell is that? So, this is actually called a bone conduction headset. Um, and there's multiple different options. Uh, Safari Land has one. There's uh, a couple different others. 3M has one, I believe, that, that they make. Um, that's the push to talk. Yeah, so... A, what's a bone conduction headset basically it's a lower profile version and it's honestly a little bit older technology um a lot of the theaters uh theater productions we talk about broadway we talk about um any type of large performing venue will use bone conduction in order to uh put a lower profile and a lower signature onto the individual speaking that's pretty much what this does is it allows you to have hearing protection on while also getting feeds from whoever you're plugged into on your comms right so we we look over here at chris's stuff he's able to right now he doesn't have the ear protection actually in um but he's able to talk and have the vibration of his voice 
conduct into the microphone a little bit better. So there's the microphone, and then it also, he's got um, the downlink from the headset coming into the side of his temple, which will help push the sound into into his head. That's how bone conduction works. Um, I'm not I'm not a crazy scientist. I'm not going to tell you the exact way of how it works, but that's pretty layman's version of how it works. We'll see a downlink here. This is actually, so this plug here is a turnaround. Um, that is going to link into this push to talk. Uh, the push to talks are made by 3M. They're made by a bunch of different companies. The one that he has on specifically uh, is made by an airsoft company. I really, again, this is older technology. So you're going to see his is kind of a box there. There's quite a few uh, that are a lot smaller these days. But uh, I think this this is the one that we see more often than not, the, the standard military to NATO one. This is obviously a lot of the search results that you'll get are majority of the time airsoft results. So be careful of, of who you're looking up if you're trying to replicate this gear. If you're trying to replicate for airsoft, hey, a lot of the work's been done for you and you're going to save a shit ton of money. Um, anyway, so we hop back over to Chris. So there is that turnaround that pops into the push to talk and then the push to talk goes directly into, you'll see that wire coming up into the middle of this uh, PRC radio. That is a NATO plug. Uh, I don't remember the exact designation, but this is what we call a NATO plug. We use it on all of our vehicles in the military, um, all of our radios, um, headsets, comms, things like that. That's generally the connection that you're going to get. Now this little antenna here, we call this a small whip. Um, this right here. So, or a short whip, rather. Um, that's a Harris short whip. That's specifically for this radio that we're looking at, the PRC, the 152. Um, it's still a little bit older radio, but it's uh, very, very capable. I, if I was Chris, I would use a much larger antenna. Um, he's not going to have that large of a reach with this antenna, but also he's in a country like Romania where there may not be so much uh, radio interference like there is here in the U.S. This is actually... A PRC 152 so you can see kind of what radio he has there all right so we're moving on down what else do we want to talk about here okay so what are these purple things and this is where I'm gonna I'm about to poke a hole into his shit as well but whatever uh, poke a hole into his gear so these are infrared chem lights so um, first of all Chris we use him we see him use uh, night vision in the game but like where the hell where the hell is his night vision also, where the hell is he going to store his night vision? His pants are a little tight. I don't know where he's going to put a pair of 31s or, or, you know, quads. Uh, so I'm not really sure how the hell he's going to do that. But anyway, um, so he's got four IR chem lights. God only knows how long they've been on his gear. This one looks like it's got some sun damage on it. So when you leave chem lights out of the package like that, obviously they don't crinkle, which is super nice, but... Um, generally you want to replace these every single time you go on, on mission or go and do whatever, whatever you're going to go do because they get stepped on, they get cracked, you bump into stuff. Um, they wear out, they have an expiration date, things like that. Um, so whatever. Anyway, so infrared chem lights, why the hell do you need them? So infrared chem lights are, um, they're on the, the infrared spectrum. You crack them, you shake them, you drop on the ground and only guys with night vision devices can see that infrared light so it's it's really nice for marking things when you're working in a team in a low light environment and you don't want the enemy or somebody else to see what the hell you're doing that's pretty much all it is um right here he's got and now again there's jillions of types of gear what is this little thing hanging down right here it's basically an accessory pouch um i pulled up uh, i believe Again, I was just on the Spirit Assistance website, so I just, I think I pulled up one of theirs. Um, we will come in, there's that, uh, okay. We'll just come in here. So we'll go to their shop, we'll go into uh, chest rig. And I think they actually have an accessory section where they throw in... Where the hell is that guy? Let's take a look here at their pouches. Let's see if I can see one. I'm probably going to speed right past it. Hey, there we go. Okay, so they call theirs the sack. Um, I actually... You know what's funny? Is I had this gear right here. 
Let's pull this out. Okay, so let's hop over here. All right, so this is a Spirit of Systems rig with something that we were experimenting with. This is another company that makes that. But basically, these are these are uh, PMAGs. These are AK PMAGs. Um, I've got a little Baofeng in there. Those are the radio pouches from Spirit of Systems, not necessarily uh, the ones that Chris has on. But that's that sack pouch. So what's what these are used for, mine's a little bit different than his. I don't have the little bungee on the side. What this is used for is carrying gloves, medical equipment, um, extra, you know, the uh, the chem lights, if he was going to keep them actually in the package, package uh, that's probably what he would use that for. So, for those of you replicating it, uh, that sack pouch is not exactly the same, but you're going to get freaking close, okay? Um, and you're going to, it's probably going to behoove you anyway to do some of your own research and figure out what's good for you uh, instead of just directly copying everything he's, he does. But, because some of it doesn't make any sense. Anyway, so we keep on moving down here. So now, now we'll see uh, he's got a karambit uh, knife plugged into this guy with just, it looks like, yeah, like a Kydex insert with a Velcro on the front of it, um, which is fine. Like, I'm not a big fan of karambits, but hey, man, if this is going to be a kit that you're just going to pick up out of like a trunk or something and throw it on, that, that'll work. Uh, then on this side, this is something I'm going to poke a hole in, and I made fun of this for a while now. Uh, it makes sense. It it makes sense tactically, I guess. But, you know, maybe not. Maybe not so much. So, first things first. We talked about PDWs. So Chris is the only person on this team that carries this PDW. Now, what kind of magazines does the, does the BNT USW use? It uses CZ75 magazines, okay? Again, I'm poking holes in what the fuck they did. It's overall, it's pretty cool, but like, come on. So anyway, it uses CZ75 magazines. So he's got one mag on him, all right? And it looks like it's a 17 round magazine. It's not an extended one like we saw. So then, why in the world, if we look up here, so that right there next to the, next to that purple cam light is a Glock magazine. With a base plate on it. So why in the world does Chris have a horizontally mounted Glock magazine on his kit? Now, a couple of the other guys on the crew run Glocks. Chris seems to be one of the guys that like runs on his own and does his own thing. But that's all I'm saying is like, what, oh, why? Logically, why? Why does that make sense? Okay. So then we'll move on down. We'll move on down to Chris's pants here. So they look very, very similar to a UF Pro pair of pants. Again, I couldn't find the exact pants, um, but UF Pro is a company that makes a lot of cool uh, tactical pants. I don't remember where they're out of, but I think they're European. Um, but anyway, so these pants are actually going to be kind of like, and I used this, um, Recoil Magazine has a pretty good write-up on tactical pants, but I used this and we're going to see multiple different features of the pants that Chris has on in a couple of others because I can't find the exact pair. So this right here is a Condor TAC Ops. Um, it has these these two divided uh, pockets like Chris has. And then it has a knee uh, insert for knee pads. Then we take a look over here. This has got the bridge that he's got on, it, on his side here. This one, right? So we see how those two align and he's got a little knife pocket on the side there. Um, I couldn't exactly find that same pocket design on his thigh, but I found these at UF Pro, which are very, very, very close. Um, so these are the P40 classics. They've got that pocket. Uh, it's a larger pocket. They've got a little zipper there. Uh, nice little knife pocket up in the front there, but not the exact same pants. Then there's these. These are the Strikers, um, the Striker XT. They've got this little zipper here. They've got a tiny little knife pocket uh, in the front there, maybe for pens and stuff. And then that same feature where the the pants come to like a V. So you're not going to find the exact same pair of pants, because I, and I even looked at Arcteryx at a couple of designs that they have. This is pretty similar, uh, again, but not the exact same thing. So same thing, only different. 
um, but you're gonna you're gonna see and you're gonna have a tough time finding the exact same pair of pants with all these features and there's probably a reason for that you know there's probably some copyrights going on um, I, one of the things I commented on uh, to some of the guys here in the warehouse was this stitching on here is contrast stitching and a company called cool actually makes uh, pants with contrast stitching so maybe uh, might be inspired by all of the above that's actually a katanic uh, pair of pants not cool so we'll come in here we'll see if i can see some of their contrast stitching but um nope nope not gonna do it for me nah you guys can look on your own and uh and see what, what exactly i'm talking about gusseted crotch uh we've got uh reinforced knee so that you know if you're kneeling and doing all that garbage uh you're not tearing up the pants too too bad uh some of the guys on wolfhound actually run these arcteric uh knee pads which i will talk about uh in a later video because we're going to go over their specific gear and then solomon so these are the solomon speed crosses i believe these are speed cross fours uh basically there you go that's it. this is speed speed cross five that i have uh up here but still um, you're going to get, that's, that's the woman's version. There we go. Um, speed cross fours. So they're very, very popular within the, uh, firearms and technical community. A lot of, uh, some of the special forces contractors or CIA dudes used to wear them. And then they, they kind of exploded in the like three percenter tactical world. Uh, so pretty popular pair of shoes. Side note. Uh, to those of you who are going to pick up a copy of these or a pair of these, they are not super durable. So when you run these super hard, they're going to last maybe three months. Um, so just be aware of that. Like they're great and they grip to the ground super, super well, especially if you're in like a loose gravel type of environment, but three to six months is what I would expect to get out of them. Um, that, and they're not super comfortable for standing around for long periods of time. So this is, if you're going to go cosplay or recreate this gear, just keep that in mind. All right. Um, from there, realistically, that brings me to a close on Chris's gear. Um, some interesting thoughts though, you know, the bone conduction headset is something unique. Uh, the VTAC sling that's not attached to his gun in any way is kind of interesting. The mounting of the grenades where they can just slip right out if he has to do a reload at any point, um, that kind of stuff. Now, Something we're talking about is the direction that his magazines are in. So the direction that his magazines are in um, are faced away from him, right? So they're faced in the same direction that I would reload uh, AR mags. You can, with AK mags, you can load them either way. What's going to go on is basically if I need to reload this, one of two things is going to happen. I'm going to drop my hand and slide it against my chest and grab the magazine and do my reload or i'm going to come in this way and grab and come underneath and reload now if i switch it this direction i can come in and torque my hand like this either way it's not going to be super comfortable i think that this direction makes a lot more sense for those magazines face the way that he has them so just something to think about if you guys are going to run ak's um by all means, this is a great way to do it. You're just gonna you're gonna shoot, 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 break the gun down, slide your hand across your chest rig like this with this blade hand, grab the mag, thumb the th I thumb the magazine out. Chris actually runs underneath and grabs. Uh, something that we were looking at earlier is all of his reloads. He's got his freaking finger in the trigger. Don't do that. Um, I don't. I, it's like it's like somebody with intelligent thought went through and did all this research, and then somebody with zero gun knowledge like actually program the movements in there it's it's very strange anyway um that is chris's kit uh talking about we'll we'll talk about this in an, in another section so, but i'm going to talk about uh umber eyes kit i'm going to talk about canine i'm going to talk about uh night howl and his glock uh and you can actually purchase that glock the way that it is um, the PKM that Lobo has and the kit setup that Tundra has, um, a lot of them are very, very similar kits, which is actually pretty cool. That's why, uh, it makes a lot of sense for them to be set up that way. It doesn't make a lot of sense for Chris to be such an individual. Um, 
they oftentimes refer to Chris in the game as Captain or Alpha, uh, which means he's probably the the mission command dude. So what I would say is why doesn't he have more mission command shit? Just going to let that sit there. Anyway, so not going to poke a whole bunch of holes in, in uh, Resident Evil there, but overall, it's pretty cool. I like that they put in a lot of effort on this. Um, yeah, that's it. it Took me about half an hour, went over all that stuff. Like I said, we'll talk about those other guys at a later date. We are going to do another playthrough right now. So we're going to start playing through the game again. I've got infinite handgun ammo, and I want to get to a point where I can actually use that AK in Resident Evil. Um, so we are going to pop back out here. We're going to play on standard difficulty until we can get all those guns. Uh, I'd like to play on hardcore, but it was really, really difficult. Uh, I think it's going to be a lot easier once we get uh, some more mods, some more like bonus content and stuff, and infinite ammo on some newer guns maybe that we can spawn into the game with. Um, that'll be kind of cool. So uh, let's get started. And feel free to ask me any questions while we're doing this. Um, I you know, have quite a bit of knowledge on, on this kind of stuff. Especially the proper employment of some of these weapons. All right. So I was playing, uh, let's see, last time, and I kind of got a rage quit a little bit. Um, I was frustrated because I was getting my ass handed to me uh, with just the, the starting pistol. So hopefully we can get to a point where uh, we get a much stronger handgun and we can start to own all of the lichens and werewolves and shit. All right. So the nice thing is I'm not going to be nearly as scared as I was the last time. Sup, girl? Come inside. The others are waiting. What the fuck is this? Outside, and I will, you're going to get us all killed. For the gear review that we just went over, I will make a breakout video and make a clip on YouTube. Uh, just like we're going to do with the Chris Redfield rifle. It's really so more of the Wolfhound rifle. Um, we'll go through that. All I am very left. tempted to... Uh, to play through... Or not to play through. To recreate that rifle uh, in real life. It's actually pretty cool. Um, somebody asked me, so th it was weird. I couldn't, uh, I couldn't see the, I couldn't respond to the comment on YouTube. Um, but someone asked me, you know, what would be your perfect setup if you didn't use that Draco build? And honestly, um, that Draco build is pretty cool for where you are. So the more research I do on like palace, the Dimitrescu castle and stuff like this in this game, um, the closer that I get to Thinking that we're in Romania, or Transylvania, which is actually in Romania, um, which gets me kind of to a point where it would make sense, right? It would make sense if I had 7.62x39 or uh, like a 5.45. Uh, what am I supposed to do here? Um, 5.45 AK. So one or the other. So the Draco would actually make a lot of sense. Dracos are, are manufactured out of Romania. Um, and I'm sure parts and accessories for a full-size Draco would be more available. Now, the biggest thing that I would say on that Draco build Damn. is right the now there's a 7 and 3 quarter inch barrel. Uh, I would probably, and and it has a 7 and a half inch suppressor on it. That's like 20 ounces. I would probably, these days, I would probably get a titanium can. Uh, probably something, you know, something lighter, probably something smaller. The Wolfman that, uh, that, um, Dead Air Suppressors makes, Dead Air Silencers makes, is, is actually bad? a really good option. We can bust uh, that way I could get a little bit longer barrel length, uh, and then actually use that velocity to get more done, right? So I could reach out just a little bit further. I mean, 762 by 39 is not the longest distance item, but, or longest distance, uh, projectile, but... You know, better than 100 yards. You know, I could probably get around 250 
with maybe an 11 inch barrel. to breathe in the smoke I know thank you Ethan <coughs> you're kind I hope your family is safe I do too once we get out of here maybe you'll get to meet them where are we going girl we going up here let's go up here uh I'm just skipping just, all the cutscenes um okay. That way we can play through a little bit faster. Because, really, I'm just here for the violence, so. <laughs> Jump. Boom. All right, cool. Hang on. Is this guy open? Maybe this guy? Hey, look at that. Why couldn't I just do it? Whatever. <laughs> Resident Evil logic. All right. Oh no, oh, I'm so, I'm getting hurt, oh my god, oh. Okay, well that guy's dead. Here to the church. Yes. Save. Cool. <laughs> she creepy. Uh, wait. We need the demon, and then that's probably good. And then we need the maiden. Cool. Nothing but blood and death. Huh? Yeah, I got one. Yeah, okay, there we go. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. All right, where are all the fish? No fish? We don't get any fish? Okay, whatever. I think this is Magneto. I think this is where we come across fucking Home Slice with his awesome magnetic powers. Well, well. Oh yeah. Didn't think anyone was left. You must be pretty tough. Huh. Who the fuck are you? Oh, you're not low. Skip that. The man is of no real use to anyone Really else. don't care. My daughters do so well. I really should have, like, figured out some of the, um... <laughs> the hacks where I could put Lady Dimitrescu in some frickin' bikinis and shit. Like, that would be kind of funny. I just gotta figure out how to do it. Hiya! Karate! Nice, Ethan. <laughs> oh no! Oh my god! Oh. Do this thing. Wait, where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? Uh, what's going on here? Oh shit! Fuck! False. Uh, I don't know what the hell I'm supposed to do here. What are we doing? Right, like here? There? Yep. Okay. Oh my god! <laughs> my word. 
Uh, okay. Boop, boop, boop. Boop, boop, boop. Oh, boop, boop, boop. Boop, boop, boop. Oh, nope. Nope. I gotta go over here. Gotta keep Donna and Moreau entertained. Alright. So now it's time for the beautiful, blood soaked grand finale. Ha ha ha! Nothing like fresh American ground beef! Ha 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 ha! Too close. Wait, do those freaks have Rose? Yeah, yo. Load that bitch back up. All right, cool. You know what? I really should have gotten infinite like shotgun ammo or something. Hindsight's always twenty twenty, I guess. Didn't we? We come back through here, I believe, later on in the game. All right, there's that, there's that. Okay. All right, this is where we started. Here. Okay. Let's go. Hey, there's Duke. Hopefully we can buy, uh, AK. All right, let's see. Oh, yes. I've prepared a special present for you. Oh, fuck, yeah. Ah, uh, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Uh, 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 take this guy, put it here. Take this guy, rotate it, put it here. Grab that bitch. Put it there. Boom! No, what? What? Yes. <laughs> Aha! There we go. All right, cool. Uh, what else we gotta do? I gotta sell this stuff. Oh nope. I guess I could just sell all this ammo, right? Because I've got infinite ammo. We'll just we'll hang out of that. We'll hang out of that. Why don't we just? Yeah. All right. Sell that. Okay. Thank you for your purchase. Have a wonderful adventure. Sick. Oh, I need more. I need more rifle ammo. So is it sniper rifle Not ammo that, that I use for this? Is that... A shotgun ammo. Rifle ammo. Ah, I should have done that. Crap. I don't have that much money anyway. Alright, well, what are you we'll buying? rock the AK for a little bit. Or, I mean, we'll rock the, uh, the Samurai Edge for a little bit. 10 round mags suck. But that's cool, so I can just like sell handgun ammo. <laughs> and then freaking just get more money. That works. Okay, so this is where we came in. Alright, mark that. And there's this guy in here. Grab that. Come out. We're gonna go meet our big old CrossFit friend. Nope. And I'm gonna get caught. Break all her shit. Oh, we're coming up here. Oh, is that locked too? Okay. Oh, okay. So then I get attacked. Oh, no, bugs.
Oh, I need to get down. Okay. Oh no, my hand. It is hot as shit in this office. All right. Let's see here. Grab that. Cool. Sell it. I started a fire for me. That's so nice. All right. Uh, cool. Your lock pick. Locked. All right. So another thing that uh, I would probably do this AK instead of what he's got go got going on. There's a company called Atero Arms that actually makes a mount. If you're looking at the the optic the way it is now, um, where you can move it, you can replace the rear sight basically, and move that optic back. That way you could get a little more leverage on the gun. Um, you can run your thumb over you know the gas tube. Probably I'm gonna have a, a review coming up or more of like a tactical tip coming up. How to you how to mitigate heat on the AK uh, using some pretty cheap uh, products. So then you could just wrap it in that and get set up. You know what I mean? All right, cool. Let's rock them off. Let's do this thing. Yeah. All right, cool. Let's uh kill these skinny bitches. Nope, it's locked. All right, let's use the... We're gonna use the Crimson Eye to open up that portion. Then we're gonna do this way faster now that uh, we know what the hell's going on. So, uh, key items, we're gonna separate that. F, cool. All right, let's hop out. Let's go. Let's go. Cool. All right. Yep. There's Cassandra or who, whichever bitch that is. Oh. How the hell? There we go. <laughs> I haven't cut open All right. Uh, I... where am I at? There we go. Let me string you up. I want to go over here. Come in here. Go this Dead. way. All right. Let's come this way. <laughs> What's that? I'm gonna, if I'm going this vest, I'm gonna end up missing something, but. I'm just gonna keep going. Okay. Where's her little glass here? Nothing? Nothing? What's that? Hang on, ammo. No glass? Okay. I think this is the part where we hit, like, all the creepy dudes. So... Boop. Whoop. Cool. Come in here. We go like this. We're gonna shoot this guy. Boop. 
And boop. Cool. This is where we use a flashlight? Okay, cool. Chamber pot. <laughs> Alright, uh did I I don't wanna like miss a whole bunch of shit, but I guess I'm gonna miss a whole bunch of shit. Alright, well. I'll just come in here. Go like so. Okay. Uh yeah. We go this way. And then go like this. And then go like this. And I think there's creepy stuff. Creepy stuff? There's creepy stuff. Yeah. That one actually scared me. <laughs> okay, we come in here. There's dude. Okay. Oh, reload. Damn, I don't remember them taking this many bullets. That's a lot of rounds to the face. Okay, cool. Cool. Let's run over here. Let's go like, hiya. Okay, cool. Oh shit. Do we wanna, yeah, we'll just go like that and then like that. Okay, cool. Load some more rounds. Oh, that guy wants some too. All right, cool. Yeah, we good? Anybody else want some? Okay, that's me. Oh, oh, I hear somebody. There he is. Ooh. Oh my god, those. Oh, so scary. Your tonight's main dish. Okay, uh, this way? Maybe? I don't really remember. This guy. Oh yeah, and this is where I kill her. Okay, cool. That was fast. Alright, let's do this thing. Whoa! Ah, crap. Come here, bitch. Woo! Not on purpose. Uh, I tried to block that. Didn't really work. This can't be. Oh, again, lots of shots to the face. Move your hands, impertinent man! I'll slice your throat and stuff it with worms. I'm getting a little bit better with that. Whoa, shit, not what I meant to do. Lot of rounds to the face. Okay, lady. Cool, got the thing. This just like inadvertently turned into a speed run, but I guess that's what we're gonna do. All right, uh, yep. Let's go. Lockpick. What's this guy? Oh, a compensator. Cool, let's go. Lockpick. Oh, hey, can we go back and do this? Damn, it takes too long. Cool, a statue. Yeah. Okay, cool. Here, here. Can we go back out here? 
Nope, don't have that. Uh, I gotta go to the wine cellar, I believe. Cool. Where was that? Is it up here? Ah, oh, crap. There's a lady. I don't remember where the other... Ah, uh, come on. I don't remember where the, the other window is. Where's the other window? Oh, shit. Where was it? Do I take her back to that section? My throat, it's so dry. Crap. <laughs> I don't remember what the fuck. You're finished. Oh, it killed me. Lame. All right, whatever. I got to, uh, wait, no, don't change the difficulty. Uh, I gotta hop out of here anyway, so. I appreciate you guys watching. I'm gonna have to...